to, to today's uh, workshop will focus on using LinkedIn for job search and career development. Um, I'm going to share my screen and take you through some initial uh, intro and logistical uh, elements, and then we will dive right into the meat of things. I have a second monitor over here, which is why you'll see me looking this way a bunch. Uh, so I promise I'm still paying attention to you. All right. Um, so like I said, welcome. Um, and as Angela mentioned, this session is going to be recorded. So no need to take, you know, super detailed notes. You'll be able to reference it later. In addition to that, I have developed two handouts to help you as you dive into the world of LinkedIn or as you continue to develop your LinkedIn presence and network. Those are a checklist that kind of take you through a lot of the strategies that we talk about today, as well as during part two and three of the workshop. Uh, and then um, in addition to that, a profile worksheet that focuses um, a lot on what we talk about today and helps you build out a profile. So if you're interested in those things, make sure to let Angela know or myself. Um, it's been, gosh, I guess three or four years, three years now, almost since we started, no, almost four years, I guess, since we started doing these sessions on Zoom. And um, what, one of the things that I've learned is uh, that it works a lot better for everybody if we keep everyone muted and have you um, submit your questions into the chat window. I will be taking a look at the chat throughout the presentation so that I don't miss anything that's really immediate or relevant. Uh, but otherwise there will be breaks during the presentation when we will do Q&A and you'll have a chance to um, put other questions into the chat window as well. Finally, um, we are now professional, sorry, I'm just bringing up the chat window. There it is. Um, we are now professional acquaintances. So if we're not already connected on LinkedIn, and I do recognize a few uh, names already, but if we're not already connected on LinkedIn, please do connect with me. We may get to the point today where we go over the process for connecting with people on LinkedIn. Uh, if you don't already know how, if not, that is something that we go into in detail in part two of our workshop. All right, so let's um, get started. First of all, about me. Why am I giving this workshop? What qualifications do I have? Um, why uh, am I sharing this information? So the first thing I'll say is I am not, nor have I ever been officially affiliated or connected to LinkedIn. I've never worked for LinkedIn. I've never really done any official work with them. Uh, I'm just a user of LinkedIn. I've used LinkedIn since they launched um, back in, in the mid to late 2000s. I've used LinkedIn both to build my own professional network uh, and for my own career development, as well as to find good candidates to add to my teams. Um, so I've been hi hired and been hired via LinkedIn. As with many of us, uh, my career story, I'm still on my career journey. I've been through a lot. Uh, I've been giving this workshop since 2012, so it's been a long time, um, and not only has LinkedIn changed a lot since then, the job market has changed a lot since then, and my own career has changed a lot since then, and I feel like there, there's I've continued to learn more about the best way to leverage LinkedIn and the strategies um, to put into place there, but a little bit of, about the facts um, behind who, who I am. So I currently work at a nonprofit organization based in San Francisco that provides interest-free loans to people in Northern California for various purposes. My passion is nonprofit work. Uh, and I spent eight years at the beginning of my career working in nonprofit, and now I'm back and I couldn't be happier. Uh, in between that time, I became a marketing executive for various tech companies and startups. And that was very instructive. I learned a lot, but it wasn't my personal passion project. LinkedIn along the way helped me to explore all of that and to get opportunities that I wouldn't have been able to access otherwise. So we'll talk more about the potential of LinkedIn to help us realize opportunities, explore our interests and our passions in ways that might not seem possible to us right now. Another note, um, you know, the pandemic hit me hard, just as it hit many of us. And I was laid off multiple times, had to search for new jobs. And it was tough. 
I was also pregnant um, during my last, uh, my second to last layoff in December, um, you know, and my husband also experienced uh, career upheaval during the pandemic, as many of us just trying to figure out how to make it all work. And my LinkedIn network was there for me. Uh, and we'll talk more and more about how to cultivate a, a network that will be there for you when you need them. And finally, every job I've had, and I've had uh, quite a few in you know the past 16 years or so, um, have, have, I've gotten through networking, both sort of direct, oh, I know you in real life, but also through my LinkedIn network. Um, in fact, several of my jobs, um, I you know got the interview because of my LinkedIn network directly. So it really does make a difference and I am, you know, um, proof positive of that. All right, enough about me though. This is really about you and how LinkedIn can help you. So what I'd really love is for anyone who feels comfortable, please put in the chat window why you're here today. What got you interested in learning more about using LinkedIn for job searching and career development? What are you hoping to learn? And what are your goals? I will use these comments to make to try and tailor the content today to be as valuable as possible for you. So I'll just give you a minute to type that in right now for those who are comfortable. All right, we have some coming in. So updating your profile, perfect. That is the bulk of what we're gonna spend our time on today is uh, building a strong profile and particularly the strategies for that. Not just, you know, how do I fill out this section? How do I fill out that section? But how do you fill it out in order to achieve your goals? Um, LinkedIn etiquette, we'll talk a little about that. That's great. Um, yeah, updating profile. Barbara, thank you very much for the, the, your kind words. I hope this is a valuable refresher for you. Um, and um, I, I hear from someone they're looking to get a better paying job or move up in their career. Perfect. That is uh, over the course of the whole workshop, we're going to talk a lot about career advancement and development and how LinkedIn can help with that. All right. Great. Please continue to put in your thoughts or goals or why you're here, and I will read them, but I'm going to move on in the interest of time. We do have a lot to cover today because this is a big topic. So uh, today's um, today's uh, workshop I call Level 1 or Beginner because it doesn't assume that you have any prior knowledge of LinkedIn. For some of you, this is going to be review. Uh, but for others, it's important to know about how to how to start your account or how to set up your privacy uh, settings in your account um, and other settings, where to find all those things. So we are going to go through some of that. We're going to do a quick tour of the interface. And as I mentioned, we're going to spend most of our time diving into the profile and talking about how to build a great profile. There are two other parts to this workshop over the past, what is it now, 13 year. 12 years, yeah, almost 12 years that I've been doing it. Um, we've built it out because there's so much content and people want more detail and more detail. So it's a three-part series now. In part two, which is next month on February uh, 14th, uh, as Angela mentioned, we'll talk about building up that great network. How do you connect with people? How do you make sure that your network is high quality? Um, and additionally, how do you stay engaged with them to ensure that when you need them, they're there for you. In level three, we talk about searching and applying for jobs and activating that net, that network that you built up, right? Um, and then uh, we talk, we shift gears during the second part of uh, level three so to talk about how to leverage LinkedIn to build a strong brand. Uh, what is a what is a professional brand? How can you use LinkedIn to build up that reputation for yourself? What tools are available to you on the LinkedIn platform and how do you make the most of them? 
with the end goal being that the opportunities for career advancement or the opportunities for better jobs actually come to you and you don't have to be the one constantly searching those out. It sounds like, you know, kind of too good to be true, but it can happen. I promise it, but it does take sort of time, effort, and strategy. And those are the things that we go over over the course of this workshop. All right, let's move on. So first of all, a little bit about LinkedIn in case you weren't aware. LinkedIn is not your typical social network, all right? LinkedIn is the largest professional network in the world. So you might think about a professional network like, you know, the American Medical Association or the American, you know, the Realtors Groups or stuff like that. Well, LinkedIn is basically a gigantic digital professional network for people to connect in a professional capacity. There are um, over 1 billion people on LinkedIn in 200 countries all across the world. Uh, and um, there are, uh, what's super cool about this is that it's not just like entry-level people or, you know, sort of the cogs. It's everyone, executives, CEOs, they're all on LinkedIn. I like to think about LinkedIn you know, someone asked about etiquette. I like to think about LinkedIn as a, as a gigantic worldwide cocktail party. And there's a number of reasons why I think that this, this analogy is apt. One is because the, the etiquette on LinkedIn is very similar to a cocktail party, right? So you're not going to like post pictures of your breakfast or, you know, the, the kegger that you went to last night. Like those are not appropriate for LinkedIn. LinkedIn is a professional environment. The other thing about LinkedIn, though, similar to a cocktail party, right? When you're at a cocktail party, you can walk up to anybody. And as long as you have something interesting to say, you're in and you can have a conversation with them. There are no schedules to get on, no administrative assistance to get through. You can walk up to a CEO and you can have a conversation with them as long as you have something, something interesting and relevant to say. The same is true for LinkedIn. So LinkedIn enables you to break down barriers of all sorts um, and get access to people and conversations and opportunities that you never would be able to otherwise. Additionally, um, the truth of the matter is that LinkedIn is the industry standard for recruiting and for hiring now. Uh, you know, over the past 15 years or so since it launched, it has revolutionized the recruiting industry. Recru it's the, the main tool that recruiters and employers use to find great candidates. And so the bottom line is, if they are using it, you should be using it too, right? It's just sort of logic. Here are some, some stats from LinkedIn about um, the use of LinkedIn for job searching and for hiring. All right, another reason to use LinkedIn. So I don't know if anybody here has ever gone through the exciting or scary exercise of Googling yourselves. If you, ha if you haven't, I recommend it just so you know what comes up. You are going to be Googled over the course of your job search. That is something that will happen. They will Google you. They will look at the results to make sure that there, there isn't anything that they need to know about. Now, my friend Adam, okay, before he had a LinkedIn profile, he Googled himself and all of these results came up about this escaped felon named Adam Alley from the 1980s. Now, he's about my age, so it wasn't him. Okay, but that's what was coming up when someone Googled his name. That's not a good luck. Once he built a LinkedIn profile, this was the view that came up in Google searches. Okay, so and and who controls the and you see the top two results are his LinkedIn profile, and that just has to do with the way that Google indexes the various versions of the pages. Who controls what goes on Adam's LinkedIn profile? Only Adam. Adam has complete 100% control over that content. LinkedIn, another thing that makes it different from other social uh, media platforms like Facebook or Twitter uh, or X, I guess it's called now, or anything else, um, you, people can't mention you. They can't at you. <laughs> they can't post to your page uh, without you first approving it. Adam has complete control over his LinkedIn profile, and that's what shows up first now. So while you can't unfortunately ever make 100% certain that there isn't, you know, rogue information about you out there, although you can certainly try. 
LinkedIn provides you a measure of control over those the most visible res search results about yourself on the internet. And so that's actually a really good reason to build a LinkedIn profile. We'll talk more about the content in that LinkedIn profile as we go. All right, so now let's shift gears and let's let's talk about creating an account. Um, we'll go through this part relatively quickly um, in case folks are already familiar with it. So what I'm going to do is first hide these annoying Zoom controls. All right, great. Um, I'm going to go to LinkedIn. And I am already signed in. So let's, let's, okay. You know what? Just for, because we're a little behind in time, I'm just going to show you this screenshot instead. So when you're not signed into LinkedIn um, and you you if you don't have an account yet, you will get this pop up um, that prompts you for an email address and a password. You want to make sure you put an email address you actually have access to because there will be a confirmation message sent. So that's why you need a legitimate email address. Once you sign in, you'll go through kind of an onboarding flow, um, and then you will be you will get into the main LinkedIn um, section. So what we see here, let me just make it a little bigger, is the home the LinkedIn homepage. Right. I'm going to take you on a quick quick tour of LinkedIn. Across the top here, we call this the main navigation bar. All right, we have the LinkedIn logo, which just takes you to the to your LinkedIn homepage whenever you click on it. And then we have the search bar. This operates like a Google search, right? So you can input any keywords in here and um, LinkedIn will spit out all of the relevant results on LinkedIn for you. And then you can filter from there. We'll have some fun with searching uh, in uh, part two and part three of the workshop. We have the link to your homepage right here. My network, which focuses on the connections you have as well as connections you might want to make. And LinkedIn uses its robots and its AI and its algorithms to suggest people that you may know and want to connect with. This is your jobs hub right here, this briefcase. We'll spend a lot of time there in part three of the workshop. Messaging is a place for you to send direct messages to people with whom you are connected. Notifications is a place to stay up to date on what's going on in your network. We'll talk a lot about that in part two or at the end of our time today, depending on whether we get to it. Um, advertise and for business largely are for, biz for people who are using LinkedIn in the capacity of their jobs or businesses. So if they are hiring on LinkedIn or advertising on LinkedIn, something like that. So we're not going to dive into those sections all that much during this workshop. So let's start with me. Um, if you uh, click on me, this tiny little picture of me, um, you have a sort of account-based menu that pops up. You can get to your profile, account settings, and then the manage section is really, again, once again, for if you manage a company's page or a brand's page, you can, you can do stuff there. I want, I'm gonna click on settings and privacy because once you get into LinkedIn, I want you to go to this section and explore it. Um, there's a lot here. We're not going to go through the whole thing right now. Okay. I'm going to point out a couple things to you, but I want you to go to it on your own time and explore and fiddle with it so that you can configure LinkedIn exactly how you'd like it. So the first thing I'll just point out to you is the left-hand menu, all the different larger categories. Within each category, there's a lot of settings. Okay. There's a lot. <laughs> right. So um, I'm going to go to sign in and security. Okay. So this is what, you know, what email address do you use? What phone numbers? Can you change your password? All that stuff. Devices that remember your password, right, for you, just stuff like that. Um, I want to highlight two-step verification for you. Some people call this multi-factor authentication. You want to turn this on and you wanna set it up. And what this does is it sends a verification code to your phone um, in order or to um, an app. There's different verification methods you can use so that if you're signing in from a location that you haven't explicitly told LinkedIn to recognize like your home computer or your phone, um, that you will have to go through this two-step process in order to sign in. Uh, this is, I, I, I have, you know, 
dived in a little bit to cybersecurity over the past few years just because it's it's so such an awful scams and and um, identity theft are such an awful thing these days. Um, and cybersecurity experts say that this two-step two verification is the single most important thing you can do to um, to make your information more secure online. So um, especially if you are going to be signing in at the library on public computers, you want to use two-step verification. So turn that on for sure. All right, some, uh, some other areas I want to highlight for you. So a lot of people have concerns or questions about who can see your profile, who can see what you're doing on LinkedIn, et cetera, et cetera. This is where you control all of that. Everyone has their own comfort levels regarding privacy on LinkedIn and online. So you configure your account and your LinkedIn um, activity based on your comfort level. The one thing I will say is that the easier, easier you are to, to find and the easier your content and activity is to see, the more likely it is that you will get noticed. And that's kind of the whole point of this. And remember that you're only putting things on LinkedIn that you would want people to see. Um, all right, and then go through the rest of this. Notifications is a good place so that you know you can choose: do I get a weekly digest of updates or a daily digest? Or you know, this particular group, I want to make sure that that LinkedIn updates me about every single thing that's going on in that group in real time or whatever it is. Um, so you can have a lot of op of um, options here for how you configure the notifications that you get. And does LinkedIn just send you an email and or do they send you a push notification to your phone, that sort of thing. So there's flexibility. All right, so um, definitely explore this section. There's a lot here. We're gonna go back to regular LinkedIn. I just clicked on the LinkedIn logo, takes me back to my homepage. Real quick, I'll show you the homepage and then we're gonna go to the profile. The homepage is a great place just to get a snapshot of what's going on in your network. So um, on the left-hand column here is information about um, how many people have viewed your profile, how many people have viewed posts that you've posted once you start posting content. If you manage pages, you'll get information about those. And then um, groups that you're a part of, things that you follow, uh, pages that you follow, et cetera, you can see recent activity here. So there's been recent activity in my IU alumni group. So maybe I'm interested in seeing what that is. I can get to it straight from here. The right-hand side is generally news and advertisements from LinkedIn. So um, interesting. And especially if you are looking to increase your engagement with your network, you can um, see what interesting news might be relevant based on what your goals are, what your field is, the reputation you're trying to build. But the best part about the homepage is the center, the center section. This is a news feed from your network, people you follow, pages you follow, influencers you follow, what's going on? What are they posting? What are they talking about? What are they liking? What are they commenting on? So let me show you, um, for example, Clara is one of my connections and she liked this post from Urban Innovation Fund. So I'm seeing what Clara cares about. If Clara is someone that I want to have a closer relationship with, then I want to pay attention to what she's doing on LinkedIn. And the newsfeed is a great way for me to do that. I can like this as well, or I could reach out to Clara and say, I saw the news about Urban Innovation Fund, congratulations, blah, blah, blah. So this is just a really great way. You page through the newsfeed and you, you get some, we call them triggers. There are reasons to, to reach out to someone, reasons to talk to people. All right, that's the news feed. Um, I see there's a question, what was the LinkedIn impressions? This is post impressions, Harold, I assume that's what you meant. Um, these are, um, impressions mean eyeballs on that thing. Um, is anybody else having issues with the audio? If you're having issues with the audio, say yes in the chat, if you can hear me. I wanna make sure that it's not me. Okay, okay. Great. Um, so um, impressions are eyeballs on a thing. So um, that means that 
I put, I, I post something on LinkedIn. I, I, a status update, an article that I'm sharing with my network and post impressions is 29 people have seen that post. So that's what that means, Harold. Hopefully that answered your question. All right. Um, let's go to the profile. So there's a number of ways to get to the profile from the homepage. You can click on your name right here in the top left, or you can click on me and go to view profile. This is your profile. Now, this is my profile, actually. <laughs> and because it's my profile and I'm signed in as me, when I go to my profile, I see all of these pencil icons. And that means that I can edit them. These are the ways that I edit each of these sections. If you go to my profile, you won't see those. You'll see them on your own profile. So just to clarify that. There are so, so, so many sections to profiles. And before we dive in and really um, go deep on the profile, I want to talk a little bit about strategy. So I'm gonna go back to our handy dandy um, PowerPoint presentation here. And I'm going to talk a little about keywords before we get started on the profile. So first of all, what are keywords? Keywords are a collection, or they are one word or a phrase, um, or sometimes even a sentence that is relevant for a particular topic. And in this case, we're talking about search keywords. So think about what you put in Google, right? Recruiters and employers and, uh, and other people you might wanna connect with on LinkedIn are searching LinkedIn using these keywords, okay? And if you want to catch their eye, then you need to show up when they search for those keywords. All right. So there's, and there's really two reasons. Um, there, there's sort of two reasons why the keywords are so important. The first one is um, so that the robots find you on LinkedIn, right? So if a recruiter is inputting a keyword term into a search, you need the LinkedIn robots who execute that search to pull your profile out as a search result. And so you need to make sure that you're that you are appealing to those robots using using the the, the keyword strategy. But there's more to it than that. Because once you show up in search results, you need to make sure that the human who is skimming those search results or who maybe if you're lucky clicks in to see your profile that they are satisfied, that they that, that their eye catches on the keywords that they care about, right? And that, that you get their attention because there are relevant keywords in your profile. So keywords are a really important strategy for, for not, not particularly building a high quality profile, but a, a, an effective profile, right? Now, obviously, you want a high quality profile, too, and we'll talk about that. But keywords are really important. So the next question, then, is how do you figure out what keywords you should be putting in your profile? So there are three um, kind of methods or pieces of advice I give for, for creating a list of keywords to include. The first one is to just use your judgment, right? I mean, one of the most important things about um, finding success using LinkedIn is to understand what your goal is. And really, if you haven't done that yet, you should, you know, kind of come away from our time together today and sit down and say, okay, what is, what is my goal? What am I trying to achieve? What does success look like at the end of this journey? Um, the, the short-term journey, not the, you know, like 20 years from now, what does my life look like? And so um, once you understand your goal, then you can say, okay, what are the keywords that I need in order to appeal to people who can help me achieve that goal? So um, take some time and just brainstorm because you might really have an idea of some of the keywords that are important, some of the phrases that, that you know are relevant for your goals, for who you, what you want to be doing, who you want to be. Next, look at people on LinkedIn who have the job that you want or a similar job. What are the words and phrases that pop up in their profile? What are the skills that they use? Okay, the things that you see popping up often, put those in your keyword list. Finally, look at all of the job descriptions for the roles that you want and the roles that you're applying for. You want to you want to um, notice the keywords and phrases that keep showing up in those job descriptions and add that to your keyword list. Um, okay, so um, 
keywords are something that you put embedded in the content of your profile. You don't just like have a list of keywords on the back end that you put in. It's not it's not, if, yeah, the, the, I might have not articulated that well. So if I have a list of keywords, right? So like, let's say, you know, my keyword list is like, I want to be a cupcake baker, right? That's my, that's my dream goal. Um, so I have a list of keywords like um, pastry, cupcake, um, you know, frosting, um, kitchen skills, knife skills, you know, uh, stuff like that. Um, attention to detail team player, you know, okay, stuff like that, right? Um, experience in a kitchen, um, cordon bleu, you know, so just all this stuff, right? That's just off the top of my head. Those are the words I want to make sure I use when I'm building out my profile. So it's not that you just enter a bunch of keywords. It's that those words show up as part of your the content in your profile. And yes, recruiters will see that hopefully because they'll be looking at your profile. If you're trying to go for two totally different positions, that's more complicated. We'll talk, we can talk, we can pick that up during our Q&A period. Okay, so once you have your list of keywords, how do you then use them? So um, this is where we will um, in a moment shift over and start looking at the profile sections and I'll highlight for you the areas where keywords can be particularly important and particularly relevant in in those sections. But first, I want to talk to you about the the approach to the profile overall. So, um many of us can be really hesitant to share information about ourselves online, which I totally get. But like I said before, the whole point of LinkedIn is really to get noticed and to share the information that's most impressive about yourself from a professional standpoint, and you have control over that. So the two um, perspectives that I really encourage people to take with the profile are one, um, you know, the more the better, right? Or if you've got it flaunted, like fill out as many sections as you can with as much information as you can. The second, um, keep it updated. Not like every day or even every week, but as you have more to add, add. So, you know, um, once you've got a good profile, you've built it out, I would say once a month, make sure there isn't more that you can add or things that need to be updated, et cetera. So here's some information for you, just data. Um, it's a few years old at this point, but still relevant, which is, um, you know, when you have more information in your profile, you're more likely to get noticed and you're more likely to be impressive. So you absolutely need a professional, uh, a professional looking photo. We'll talk about that. Um, putting in your industry gets you more clicks. Your photo, your industry, your, and we'll talk more about this, but your photo and your industry in particular are important because those show up in search results even before someone clicks on your profile. And so it's important to have those filled out. Um, and then there's some other interesting things that we'll talk about as we go through the profile. Volunteer work can help you, um, having more skills. Um, and then I wanted to bring this up. Um, this is with some data that I saw in 2021. Um, but I think it's it's probably still relevant, which is hiring managers, recruiters, employers, et cetera, they get it. They get how tough it is. And so while you want to make sure you're telling a good story, and we'll talk about telling a story in our profile, you don't have to hide the fact that you were laid off, um, especially due to the pandemic, because that's just a trauma that we all went through. Uh, so keep that in mind. You definitely want to think each person's situation is different, but it's not, um, it doesn't, you know, kind of blacklist you. It's not a stigma in the same way that maybe it used to be. All right. I think we are ready now to go to the profile. So um, here is my profile. We're going to go top down. I'm going to try and go pretty quickly to make sure that we have plenty of time for Q&A at the end. So this top section is basic information, and this reflects kind of what is shown in search results when, when I show up in search results, minus the, the crazy Lego image. That's what's called a hero image or a background image. 
Um, and by default, LinkedIn makes it some sort of nice blue gradient, I think. Uh, I've seen no data to suggest that that you have to change it, that there's any sort of benefit. Um, so you can leave it the nice blue gradient if you want. A lot of people use it for kind of branding um, or personality or that sort of thing. So I see a lot of Golden Gate Bridge photos. <laughs> uh, or if you have a company, you know, your company's logo or, or some other sort of branding. Um, I like the Legos that, you know, the sort of logical building, but it's colorful. It kind of fits me. So it's more of a personality thing for me. Um, but I've used other things in the past for various companies and roles that I've held. So that's the background photo. The picture of my face is your profile photo. That is, as you saw on the on the slide earlier, that is not so-called optional in that you really, really, really need a photo. Think about it this way. If you go to someone's profile and there's no photo there, what's the first thing you're going to think? Why don't they have a photo? That's not something you want someone thinking when they come to your profile, right? So get a profile photo. It doesn't have to be an actual professional headshot, but it does have to look professional. So you want to be facing forward, looking at the camera. You want to be smiling. And that's actually psychology. When you look someone in the eye and you smile at them, they like you more. And they, they become more open. There, there's studies that prove that. Don't be in the photo with anybody else. It shouldn't be blurry. You shouldn't be doing something else. Like as cool as you look snowboarding in that photo, like don't use that photo, right? Um, in general, now, as you see, it's it really is a headshot. So what, what you're wearing or what you're doing isn't really going to show. But if it does, the general rule of thumb is um, dress for the job you want. So if you want to be a lawyer, maybe dress in a suit, you know, or at least biz cash. Uh, but if you want to be an artist, maybe dress in a smock. So that's your photo. All right, moving on. So there's your name. Um, and I have a pet peeve, actually, with the name field. Um, and, uh, I, it, it's not as flexible as I wish it were, it were. Let me show you what I mean. Like first name, last name, additional name. Like we all have so many different ways of identifying ourselves now. And I feel like the field should be a little bit more flexible and malleable than that. So that's like a pet peeve I have. I use, I use the additional name field for my, for my, um, Made a name because, you know, I had a career before I got married. Um, I mean, I still do. Uh, but some people use it um, as as a um, uh, name in another language um, or that sort of thing. So um, you can audio record the pronunciation of your name for people to listen to, which is really great. I think you have to do this via the, the cell phone app, the mobile app, but um, it can be very useful. Um, my name is often confusing for people to pronounce, and so I think people appreciate it. Um, so I recommend it. You can specify pronouns if you'd like, um, and then just basic stuff. Um, all of this stuff shows up in search results, okay? Um, I want to highlight one part of the um, of the top section, though, which is your headline. So... By default, LinkedIn makes your headline your current or most recent job title. I encourage you to change this and to think carefully about what you want the headline to be. Right now, I've got it kind of back to the default, um, and I made that decision very thoughtfully. But for a long time, I, my headline was different. When I was working in marketing for tech companies, my headline was something like, creative and solutions oriented marketing leader who you know is data driven and uh you know leads teams to unprecedented success blah 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 so a lot of jargon a lot of keywords right so you can imagine that when my pro first of all the linkedin robots were very happy with that and when my profile showed up in search results all of those recruiter eyes were snagged on that headline because it was just chock full of keywords that they cared about. So think about that. The headline is prime real estate. Think of it as kind of your slogan. It's how you sell yourself in search results. All right. So that's the top section. I want to just um, quickly address a couple questions related to the photo. Um, yeah, it's as long as, as the photo still looks like you, even if it's 
um if you it's like from a lot you know a long time ago that's fine especially in in sort of the zoom era um you know nobody looks exactly the way that they look you know <laughs> i'm wearing pajama pants you know i mean um but um you want to make sure that it still at least looks a little bit like you so that people aren't there isn't sort of an abrupt um kind of realization when they see you in an interview for example um but yeah my my photos from at least 10 yeah it's probably from about 10 years ago or so so um but it looks enough like me still that uh, Harold, you, your question it can be used as a negative profile technique. I'm not sure I understand what you mean. So if you could just input a little bit more detail about what you mean, I can address it as we move along. All right. The next section is analytics. Um, this is a section that only I see about my profile. Um, and uh, it shows... Um, uh, profile views, post impressions, et cetera, and I can see a bunch of other analytics. So it's interesting and it can be a way for you to track how successful you're being at getting noticed. And then resources is another area, area that only I see and that's just things that LinkedIn wants me to check out as things that I can use. So definitely explore that. All right, um, oh, okay. So um, Harold, it's a good question. You know, wouldn't including a photo mean that you're more likely to get negatively profiled on LinkedIn? Um, I guess if someone is doing that, then yes, um, I, I would. I know that not everybody has this, this luxury, but I would. I would counter with: Is that someone you really want to be working for? Uh, and um, and think about that. Um, the LinkedIn recruiter tools that people use um, often will be blind for that until they get to a certain point of reviewing profiles. So it, it won't show up as early in the search process. Marielle, I don't know what verified means. I don't, oh, get verified. I think that's new. So I'm going to have to look into that. I apologize, folks. Um, they didn't used to have a get verified symbol. I think that's for influencers. So getting verified is like, you're important and people should pay attention to you. It's the, the, the truth is um, it, sh it certainly can help you with the stuff that we're going to talk about in level three around building a brand. It's not something you should worry about when you're first starting out. Focus on a good quality profile. Um, oh, yes. Thank you, Marietta. Mariella. Yeah, it's new. Um, is LinkedIn premium worth it? Great. This is actually in line with um, with what I was just talking about with focusing on a good quality profile. LinkedIn premium is not cheap. Last I looked, it was like 30 plus dollars a month. Um, it gets you some additional analytics um, and, and views and can, can help get you noticed. You can message people you aren't directly connected to, et cetera. So there's a bunch of um there, there's a bunch of um potentially useful elements to LinkedIn premium. What I would say is that um it's it's not a silver bullet though, especially if you have specific goals related to career development and getting a job. It's not going to just like do it for you. Um, so it doesn't take the place of a great profile and good LinkedIn strategy and a high quality network. You still need all those things. So my advice to those of you who are just starting out is focus on those things first. Great profile, good quality network. And then at that point, you can think, okay, do I want to try it out for a few months to see if it can help me get a leg up? Especially if you're in a field or going for jobs that are very high demand, you know, they get hundreds and hundreds of applications, it maybe could help you. It's something you can try and then um, and then cancel if you want. But it, the, the sort of larger answer is LinkedIn premium can be helpful, but it doesn't take the place of the strategies that we go over in this workshop. All right, let's keep going because um, there's a lot to get through. The next section is about. So the about section is where you tell your story. We all have a story. We all have, you know, here is who, who I am, what I have to offer, what I'm looking for, et cetera. Um, it's where you could address um, a career transition or, um, you know, the fact that you are freelancing and looking for full-time work or a particular success that you want to highlight um, or particular skills. It's also a very important and useful place for keywords. 
So make sure that you just like, just smush them all in there. Um, and even you'll see, I've, I've worked a bit on my about section over the past six months or so, as I've settled into my new role, which is significantly different from what I was doing before. Um, you can see that I actually have a paragraph at the end of my about section that's just a list of keywords. <laughs> this has worked really well for me. I've had this in my about section in one form or another for years, and I think that it really helps. So you should try it out. All right, moving on. Um, the featured section. So this is a great place to show, in addition to telling, how great you are. So if you have projects, documents, photos, um, or anything else, you can highlight that by adding a featured piece of material to the featured section that people can look on, look at. Activity, this is, this everybody can see as well. And this is just shows your recent activity. Now we'll talk more in part two about the importance of having some activity on LinkedIn and staying engaged with your network. But for me, when I'm looking at someone's profile on LinkedIn, I, when I see that they have some activity and some activity that's relevant for what I care about, it makes them more relevant for me. And I'm more likely to want to interact with them. And that's whether I'm looking to potentially hire them or looking to potentially connect with them to get their um, advice or guidance about something or whatever it is. So, um, you know, your activity on LinkedIn, which shows up on your profile, showcases how valuable you are both in the field that you want to be in as well as on as a LinkedIn member overall. Experience. This is the part um, that's the most like a traditional resume. You have your um, your uh, positions, the and the the companies and the timeline and the location and then the description of the positions. With this, I, and you can see I haven't fully built out this section. Part of that has to do with the career tran transition I've been through and how I'm prioritizing, you know, my time and effort in this profile. Um, but um, in general, the um, sort of approaches that you would take in a traditional resume hold true here as well. You want to um, be um, thorough, but succinct, okay? Bullet points are your friend. And in general, you, you want to focus on your accomplishments, not on your responsibilities. So your the descriptions in this section, and I'll give you an example, the descriptions in this section should not read like a job description, which is kind of what what this one does. So I need to work on, on the description for my current job. Instead, it should read like a, um, a self-performance review. Like here is why I'm so great at my job, right? Um, anytime you can include numbers with that, even better. Okay. And I'll just give you some other examples down here. Here we go. Here or down here. See? bullet points, et cetera. So anybody paging through this can see, wow, she had a real impact on that company in that role. She gets results. She makes results happen, right? That's what you want someone thinking. The descriptions are also another great place for keywords. All right, let's go back to the main profile. Um, Next is the education section. Oh, actually, and let me just highlight for you here before we keep going. Um, in the add profile, you can click add profile section and it shows you all the different sections that you could add. Um, the general rule of thumb is if you've got it, flaunt it. So you can bet that if I had a patent or if I had published a book, they would be on my profile. So put it on your profile. Assuming it's relevant um, for what you wanna be doing or for your goal and it's impressive. Uh, and we'll go through the, these other things once we're done going through the profile section. All right, education, pretty self-explanatory. Um, you don't have to put the years here if you don't want to. So if you are a little worried about ageism, one way to kind of combat that a little bit is not to have the years. And more and more, I'm seeing that on LinkedIn as people not including the years. Licenses and certification. So this is great, especially if you are a little worried about your... Um, uh, if you are a little worried about your qualifications or experience level, um, you can um, find places to get certifications that um, can add 
to your qualifications. And actually LinkedIn Learning is a good place for that. Um, and uh, we'll talk more about that in level three, but the library can get you free access to lynda.com, which is kind of the same thing, these like online courses and stuff. So if, again, if you've got it, flaunt it. Similarly, if there are projects you've worked on, that would be um, that would be a great um, thing to include. It shows as opposed to telling how great you are. Vol I'm getting through this real quick because there's some really good questions coming up and I want to make sure we have time to address them. So volunteering, again, kind of self-explanatory. What I will say about this is that there's a lot of data and a lot of firsthand accounts of hiring managers and recruiters and HR executives talking about how volunteering, um, they consider volunteer work to be as relevant as paid work experience. So if you are a little light on experience in the area you want to be at, consider volunteering somewhere um, to get some direct experience. Uh, you can also, also nonprofits are way less choosy if they're getting the work for free. And you can also start networking as a professional in that field, even if you're um, working as a volunteer. Additionally, um, companies spend millions and millions of dollars each year on corporate social responsibility and employee engagement and volunteering and, and the community because it's been shown that um, uh, teams that are engaged in that way um, with companies who, who have those sorts of programs and priorities are more productive and successful. And so when they see a candidate who already shows a propensity for community involvement and dedication to causes and that sort of thing, that makes you a more attractive employee, all other things being equal. All right, skills. So this is another place where your keywords can come into play. Um, you and let me let me just show you this because it's not super um, visible. But um, these are all my keywords, the, the bold words, okay? And um, I need to update them a little bit for my new career. I haven't I haven't fully gone through that. Um, but the, you know, these are where keywords can be important. And then the endorsements are people who sort of give it a thumbs up, like, "Yep, Sherry's good at that." And so you do want to try and get endorsements. Um, you can reach out and ask your connections for endorsements. It's totally okay. There's somewhat of a tit for tat culture, um, and that's fine as well. Remember, everyone's here for the same reason, to create a professional network. And so there is definitely a we lift each other up approach um, that a lot of people have for the people who are engaged with LinkedIn. I'm not going to lie to you. Some people have a LinkedIn profile and never check it and never engage on LinkedIn. And it's nothing personal. It doesn't mean that they don't, that, that they think that you're bad or not worth it. So definitely build out your skills. Um, recommendations. Um, you also want to get a few recommendations. They're even better than endorsements because they are people in their own words talking about how great you are. So think about former or current employers, employees, clients, partners, et cetera, with whom you've worked in any capacity that could have something good to say and request a recommendation from them. And you do this by clicking, clicking plus, ask for a recommendation, and then you search for the people. Um, I'm just going to put in my sister um, as an example. And then we say, okay, what's the relationship? We worked in the same group when I was here. And then a message. And you definitely want to personalize the message. Like always, always, always personalize the message. And just explain why you're reaching out. Remind them who you are. If it's been a while, explain that you're reaching out for a recommendation. Suggest some, some things they could focus on. Like, Robin, it would be great if you could focus on my attention to detail while we work together, as well as, you know, the great skills that I had in, you know, writing and drawing stick figures. And then, you know, Robin has something to start from. What happens once I send the request, Robin will get the notification. She can go online, type out the recommendation and submit it. And then it gets sent to me for review. And if I'm not happy, I can respond to her and ask her to edit. We can go back and forth. If I'm never happy, the recommendation never gets posted. Again, I have complete control over what's on my profile. But if we get to the point where I'm happy with the recommendation, I approve it and it gets posted to my profile. All right, so that's recommendations. Again, publications, if you've got it, flaunt it. Honors and awards, same. Languages, same. Um, and you'll notice I am only fluent in English, 
but um, it sure looks really good to be able to say that I have at least a little bit of proficiency in these other languages. And languages are something that can make you a more marketable candidate in a lot of fields, especially these days. So, you know, consider that as something you may want to explore. If you are monolingual, maybe you consider trying to learn another language as a way to make yourself more, more marketable in your field, if that's, if that's relevant. Um, finally, interests and causes. Now, um, the the people and companies and groups that you follow on LinkedIn do show up on your profile, and it's a way to show that you're like staying up to date with what's relevant in your field. So it's a good thing to have. In addition, um, the causes you care about just showcase how well-rounded you are as a human being um, and can be helpful. Um for that purpose. So that's the profile. I know I went through that really fast, but like I said, I want to make sure we have time in the next 10 minutes or so to answer some questions. So the last thing I will do is showcase these buttons here, um, open to, and then more. So the, we already did add profile section. More is um, you can save your profile as, as a PDF. You can use it to build a resume if you don't have one already. LinkedIn will help you with that or send it to someone in a LinkedIn message. The open to is really interesting. And if you haven't explored this, I recommend it. So um, you are hiring or providing services, but let's click on finding a new job because I assume that's relevant for the bulk of you. You click finding a new job and then you click the types of titles that you are looking for, what type, what locations, um, as well as you know information about the start date, employment type, full time, and then the visibility, right? Do I want that to be visible only to recruiters? Or am I okay with everybody on LinkedIn seeing that I'm looking for a job and that that's where the open to work ribbon gets added to your profile picture that you might have seen. So this is a great way to make sure that the people you want to see um, that you're looking for a job or interested in it um, see that. Now, um, you'll notice here that um, when you have it limited to recruiters only, LinkedIn will try and exclude people from your company if you have a current company, but they can't guarantee that. So there's always a chance that your current company will see it if that's a problem. Oh, no, I don't want that. How do I? Can I just yeah, discard? Great. Okay. Um, so that's the profile. We are going, I'm going to quickly switch over to um, our um, wrap up. Um, all that was left in the PowerPoint presentation was um, some preview of part two content, which we just aren't going to get to today. So you'll have to tune in uh, in a month for that. Um, but in the meantime, um, I'm going to wrap up and then I will stay for about 10 minutes or so for questions. So um, and to answer some of the ones that have already come in. Um, but you can also feel free to uh, you can also feel free to um, to leave if you're done and you're not interested in the Q and A. But but otherwise, um, I'll be here. So what now? Use the use the recording. Use the handouts. Um, put in some time to build a great profile. Think about it. Okay. Think about what it is that you are trying to accomplish who you're trying to reach on LinkedIn that can help you with your goal and what would catch their eye, what would be impressive to them and build that into your profile. Of course, make sure that um, you're being the real you, not just from a personality perspective, although of course that's important because it'll make you feel better, um, but also like from an actual factual perspective, like don't lie. <laughs> um, and finally have fun with it. As we dive into this more, especially in part two, we're going to get to the fun parts of meeting new people, interacting with them, building a network. And um, it's exciting finding people from across, from around the world that you never would have connected with otherwise who can help you achieve your goals and vice versa. That's something really special. And so um, while, yes, this does add to your to-do list a little bit, in the end, it will make your job search more efficient and um, more effective, hopefully and um, will open up doors for you and, and open up windows to the world that you wouldn't have otherwise gotten. At least that's what, what it did for me and I, what I hope it will do for you. So thank you very much everyone for attending. Let's go to some questions now and I will 
go back to LinkedIn. Um, okay, what are the ones that I missed? Okay, um, a list of keywords were, or where can we find a list? So as I mentioned earlier, your key, the keywords you want to put in your profile are going to be different for each person based on what your goals are. What field are you in? What role are you trying to get to? And so the places that you should consider finding keywords would be job descriptions that you're applying for. People who already have the job you want, look at their profiles and see the skills that they that they have on there um, and, and the, the words that show up in their headlines and their about sections, et cetera. Um, okay. Um, oh, here's a really good one. Um, if we feel that we haven't seen a ton of success career-wise yet, how do we present that in the experience session when we're writing the descriptions for our jobs? Well, the first thing I would say about that is focus on what you are good at. Just because you don't have um, like gangbuster, blockbuster metrics to share from your roles doesn't mean that you there aren't things that you've been really good at. Focus on that. Um, and find a way to um, bring those things into each description. In addition to that, you know, in your about section, you're going to want to focus on what you have to offer. So that will, you know, what is your story? What is it that you are are bringing? What, what are you good at? And, and just let that guide you in all of the content that you write for your profile. I hope that that helped. It's hard to be more detailed than that without kind of going into each person's specific situation. Um, okay, let's see what else. Yeah, you'll get the meeting recording. And if you are interested in the handouts, you can either message me on LinkedIn if you know how to connect, or um, you can respond to Angela when she sends the recording email and um, we'll get those uh, handouts to you. All right, let's say um, you don't currently have a job. This is a great question, Tara. Um, if you don't currently have a position, what do you put? So um, obviously in the experience section, you just you have your most recent one and it says when you ended, but it, I assume you mean in the headline. So in that in your headline, um, you put, you, I actually, for most people, probably including me, I should probably think about a different headline for myself. Um, you actually don't want to put your current position in your headline. Instead, you want to put something that's keyword rich and that describes kind of who you are, what you have to offer, something eye-catching and something exciting. So um, if you are, if I am someone who is trying to get into the world of cupcake baking, I would say something like talented, um, what was talented perfectionist looking for opportunities in pastry um to take the cupcake world by storm or I don't know I mean I mean that's silly but you you get the idea right so in your headline you can actually say explicitly that you're looking for opportunities so you can say you're looking for opportunities and this is what you have to offer right you are an expert in um you know building um queries for AI chatbots and you're looking for opportunities to help write, you know, thank you cards for children's birthdays. I don't know. <laughs> um, I have to write my son's thank you cards. So, um, so, but, but you can, that can be your headline, right? It's, it's keyword rich and um, it tells your story and showcases what you have to offer. read that we should put an aspirational current position and make it clear in the description that it is such because people who have current roles show up more in recruiter search. Um in the in the dis in the so put uh in the in the back in the um experience section put it like a fake current position. I haven't read that. Um that's interesting. If I saw that I would think it was weird, but it's possible that that works with the, the robots in the recruiter search. Um, I would just think carefully about what impact that has on the humans that end up behind the search. Um, that being said, one of the things you can do on LinkedIn is try it out. So you could try it out for a little bit and see what happens. Um, and then you can look at your analytics, for example, and see how many impressions your profile gets. And if your profile impressions go up, 
but your like recruiter messages, right? Or your interviews don't, then you can say, okay, well, that didn't really work. Or if your impressions don't go up at all, period, then you can say, okay, that didn't really work. So you can, you can try it out. Anyone have other questions? It doesn't have to be just about the profile. If you have other questions about LinkedIn, using LinkedIn for job search or career development, I'm, I'm happy to answer them, you know, in the next five minutes or so. That's a great idea um, to volunteer somewhere related to your field. So this is Tara. Tara's talking about, you know, the sort of weird practice of putting a fake current position. That's a great idea. And actually, I want to show you something in my background. Um, in my experience section, right at the beginning here, it was it was right after I got out of college, right here, development assistant. So this was I, this was a volunteer position and I actually put that. The reason I haven't moved it into the, this was before LinkedIn had a volunteer section. So I put it in my experience section. The reason I didn't put it in the volunteer section and move it over is because I got a recommendation for this. And right now, as far as I'm aware, it's possible it's changed recently. You can't get re a recommendation from a volunteer role, which is just bonkers. That's another issue that I have with LinkedIn. So if I want to keep this recommendation, I need to keep this, this position in my experience section, but I just put that it's a volunteer position, totally on the up and up. No one has to feel weird about the fact that I said that, um, about the fact that I'm putting it here because I'm being very upfront that it was a volunteer position, but I also got some really valuable experience. And having the YMCA on my resume is not a bad thing to have. What's a polite way to ask a connection for a job or a referral? Great question. We're going to go into a lot of detail about this in part two and especially in part three. So I encourage you to, to tune in. But um, I'll give you sort of a, a partial answer right now. The partial answer to that question is... Um, you start soft generally. So you don't just reach out to someone that either you don't know very well or you haven't had an interaction with in a long time and say, hey, I need a job. Can you help? Um, instead, you would um, ask them for advice about something or you would start interacting with them about some content that they've posted or something like that. Build up the relationship, the, the connection with them a little bit. And then once the conversation has begun, say, say, you know what, I'm actually, you know, looking for a new role. I'm wondering if you have any advice or you could provide guidance. We call that an, an informational interview, right? And you say you, if they're local, you offer to take them for coffee, or if not, um, you, you see if they're willing to spend 10 minutes on a video chat with you giving advice. So you don't make the hard ask right away. You ease them into it. And then hopefully by the end of the informational interview, they're willing to introduce you to someone, refer you into the team or refer you into the role to get you an interview, for example. So um, again, we'll talk way more about this stuff in part two or part three, but that's my recommendation for that is you gotta start soft. Um, Alan asks, I don't see an impression section on my profile. So I don't actually have a premium um, subscription. I did for a while, but I no longer do. Um, so in analytics, um, if you if you don't have any engagements and you don't really have much of a profile, then you won't see that. But you should have an analytics section, and then that'll show you post impressions. If you haven't posted anything, there won't be any post impressions. So, Alan, I don't know what your situation is, whether you've posted anything. But, yeah. All right. I need to wrap up now, um, but uh, it was a pleasure. Thank you, everyone, for your great questions. Um, please feel free, if you know how, to reach out via LinkedIn. Just search for my name. Uh, otherwise, we'll learn how to do that next month and um, and uh, answer more questions that you have, and we'll get you the, the um, recordings, et cetera. And until then, good luck, everybody, building out your profiles. Uh, and I hope you have some fun with it. And uh, I wish you all good luck.
Thank you, Sherry, for sharing your knowledge on how to start building and enhancing our LinkedIn profile. I'd also like to thank everyone for attending. I hope you found this presentation informative and helpful to you. I'll be sending out a survey along with the link to the recording and along with the handouts and the slide deck. Um, if you guys have time, please help us fill out that survey. Any feedback can help us improve in our programming. And with that, good luck, everyone. I hope to see you in part two.